Hey guys, so today I wanted to have a chat about some things that I've learned from project panning over the years. So I have been panning for over five years now. I think my first project pan started in 2016, so it's been almost six years now. But for the sake of a catchy title, we're going to do five things I've learned from project panning in five years. So I feel like my views on project panning have changed a lot over the years. And if you want to hear more about just kind of like what a project pan is, how to start one, things like that, I did a video on that in December. So I will link that for you below. I also have lots of playlists on like project panning tips. So all of that will be linked below as well if you want more content like this. But these are just some lessons that I've taken away throughout my project pans throughout the years. So the first thing that I've learned through panning is that I never fully know a product until I've used it up all the way. And so it's really changed the way that I view reviews on YouTube as well. Let's say I am panning a foundation. It's probably going to take me at least, like, well, it depends on how much I have left, but from start to finish, it would probably take me a full year with the size of my collection to go through one single foundation. So having used that one foundation through all different seasons, through all different phases of like my makeup preferences, I've presumably tried it alongside lots of different products, lots of different sunscreens, lots of different powders. I've really gotten to know that product. I've probably used it over a hundred times by the time I've used it up. And that's just why I really love watching reviews from panners or just people that go through their makeup. I like watching empties reviews because then I just feel like you get a more thorough and, and quality review of that product versus somebody who's just trying a ton of new products every single week. I can still see the value though. Like I'm not trying to throw shade at YouTubers who review a ton of new releases because I do think there is some value in having tried a lot of stuff so that you can compare things to each other. Like I'm not going to be able to tell you how this foundation that I panned compares to all the other drugstore foundations out there because I haven't tried all the other drugstore foundations out there. So I do think that there is value in both, but I definitely, at least when it comes to my own reviews, I feel like I don't really know a product until I've used it for at least a few months. And so, you know, I will give you my review of a product after I've used it for a couple weeks, but I also want to give you that follow-up of like, here's what I think of it now that I've used it up completely. Or, you know, I like doing videos about products I changed my mind about, or that sort of thing. And I do think it is harder to give those really quality reviews if you're trying a new foundation every other day. I just, I don't understand how you could fully get to know each individual product that well if you're if you're just cycling through them so quickly. So it really has changed how I view my own reviews and how I view the reviews of others and who I really like to go to for reviews. So the second thing that I've learned from project panning, and this is something that I feel like I've kind of come to realize over the years, and that's that panning should never be a punishment for owning a lot of makeup or for owning more makeup than I need because I don't need any of this makeup. None of us need makeup. This is just supposed to be a fun hobby. And panning should be like a fun extension of that. For me, you know, I, I think I used to almost force myself to pan things that, not necessarily things that I hated, but maybe things that I wasn't really enjoying reaching for, just because I felt like, well, I bought this, so now I have to use it up. And now I've just kind of shifted my mentality. I, I just never want there to be any shame in liking makeup and enjoying the process of collecting makeup. I don't want to own more makeup than I can realistically use and use up in some amount of time, but it's also unrealistic to assume that I'm going to be able to own just like one of each thing, like one foundation, one concealer, and use that up all the way. That used to be how I did it back before I really got into makeup, back when makeup was more of like a utilitarian thing for me, but now makeup is fun. It's an art for me. I like having options. I like having, you know, lots of different blushes and eyeshadow palettes to choose from. And, and where I think panning comes in is this is where I want to make sure I am using the products that I love before they expire. Like, let's say there's a bronzer that I splurged on, right? The Charlotte Tilbury Air Airbrush Bronzer. If I were to pan this, the mentality behind that would be, this is something that I don't want to just let sit. Like, I don't want to just save this fancy product for a special occasion. Every day is a special occasion, right? You can, you even if you're just bumming around at home, I still want to allow myself to use those fancy products that I bought for myself because 
while, I mean, it's not like I go out to fancy events all that often. So if I save this for my, you know, a few times a year fancy occasions that I go to, I would never use it up and it would expire before I even got the chance to use it up. So that's why, that's where I want painting to come in. I don't want painting to feel like this, like, oh, you idiot, you bought too much makeup. Shouldn't you be ashamed of yourself? <laughs> like, no, this is, this is something that I want to do to um, just enjoy what I have, to enjoy this beautiful makeup collection that I've curated, not um, not to make myself feel ashamed of liking makeup and wanting to collect it. Like, there's nothing wrong with that. There should be no shame in that. So, I mean, panning has always been fun for me, but I do think that I used to kind of view it as, like, something that I had to do because I... Um, owned more makeup than I need, but now I view it as something that I enjoy doing because I want to enjoy the makeup that I bought and collected all the way to the end because I just get a lot of satisfaction out of knowing that I used up a product and got all of my money's worth out of it and really got maximum enjoyment out of it. I found lots of creative and fun ways to use it, so that's how I started viewing project panning recently. So that has been probably like the biggest lesson of all with project panning is, and that's really something that I didn't start realizing until the last like year or so, but I really think um, it's, a, it's a very important mindset shift for me. So that kind of brings me to the third thing that I've learned from project panning, and that is not everything that I own needs to be panned, right? Like there are certain categories of products where I just, I know I'm not going to use that up completely. Like, for example, liquid lipsticks. Now, I've kind of stopped buying liquid lipsticks for the most part just because I don't really enjoy the formula of them anymore. I'm more into just either bullet lipsticks or kind of like sheer balmy lipsticks. But I own a couple of like really bright, vibrant liquid lipsticks. And I do wear them from time to time. I enjoy them. But I also know that I'm probably never going to pan them. And that's okay with me. I feel like forcing myself to pan a liquid lipstick that I previously liked would kind of make me resent that product. Like this happened to me earlier this year actually where I put my, uh, I put two red lip products in my project pan just to kind of challenge myself and see if I could do it. And I think what I concluded is just that I don't really want to pan red lipsticks. <laughs> like it was um, the Physician's Formula Liquid Lipstick in Tulip Treatment and the Milani Lip Liner in True Red. Once I put those into my project pan, I kind of just started to feel stressed out by them, which is sad because those are two products that I previously loved. So I've kind of just realized like certain types of products don't need to be panned. Like I can just be okay with the fact that, you know, I'm going to enjoy this product. I'm going to keep it and use it as much as I want to use it while I have it, but I'm also not going to force myself to use up this liquid lipstick and like use it more often than I otherwise would. I think lipstick is a good example and eyeshadow, I would say eyeshadow too. Like I love, I love collecting eyeshadow palettes. I think I have like 20 something palettes right now. That's a good number for me. But I also know that I'm never gonna use up all 20 of my eyeshadow palettes. It's just not gonna happen and that's okay. <laughs> like I've already bought them. I'm gonna use them as much as I can. I am working on kind of like a a very chill take on a pan that palette with my ABH Marvina palette this year where I'm just having one shadow from this palette in my pan those eyeshadows all year long. The goal is to hit pan on all the shades. If I don't, it's no big deal, but it's a palette that I already love. It's like one of my favorite palettes in my whole collection and I just wanted to show it some love and kind of challenge myself to see if I could pan it, but I would never try to pan a palette that I don't absolutely love. I feel like I can appreciate a palette and what it brings to my collection without uh, forcing myself to pan it at the same time. So on the flip side of that, there are some categories of products that I do want to pan everything I own in that category at some point, like foundations, concealers, powders, those kinds of products. I would love to pan all of those before they expire. There's certain categories where I like to have a lot of options, like lipsticks and eyeshadow palettes, and then there are certain categories where I like to have a few options, but not too many, and I do have the goal of using those things up. But I've also just stopped putting pressure on myself to pan things that I just don't want to pan. So number four, the next thing I've learned from project panning is I've just learned to embrace what I actually like and what I actually wear. And I touched on this in my recent lipstick declutter, which I can link below if you missed it, but I've learned that I don't need to have every color of every kind of like color cosmetic product in my collection. I don't need to have a complete collection with every color of the rainbow and every undertone of every color of the rainbow. I think there are some people who get a lot of joy in having like a really completionist 
collection mentality, but that's just not me. Like, I think I used to, like, let's say I was at the store looking at lipsticks and I found a color of lipstick that I didn't already have that was unique to my collection. I thought that I needed to have that. Like, I needed to add that to complete my collection. I would always go for the color that, like, this is something I don't already have. This is something that's gonna add something new to my collection, which isn't necessarily a bad mentality, but sometimes that would lead me to pick a color that I didn't even like or that I'm not even going to wear, like a bright grape purple. I just don't wear that kind of color. Or like a bright Barbie pink, hot pink. I It's just not my color. It's not something I, I, I just... I think I just know myself and I know my makeup preferences better now as a result of panning and also through decluttering too. It's helped me to really hone in on what I actually will wear and what I actually like to wear. I don't have to like to wear every single type of color. And I do think there's a difference, like there are some types of colors that I'm not going to wear often. Like I like having an orange lipstick or I like having a lime green eyeshadow because those are things that I do like to have fun and play with from time to time. And those are things that I wouldn't expect myself to ever pan but they're just fun things to have. Um, but there's also some things that I just don't need, like the really like hot pinky coral lipstick that I recently decluttered from Madame Glam. I held on to that freaking lipstick for so long just because it was unique to my collection, and I kept trying to force myself to use it, and I kept keeping it through so many declutters because it was unique to my collection, but I didn't actually ask myself if I liked that color on myself. So, so that's another thing that panning and also just generally curating my collection has taught me is I don't need to have everything. I can be content with just having the things that I like. And then thing number five that I've learned from project panning is I've just learned to be a more mindful consumer through panning. And I think this is a takeaway that so many people end up having. And, you know, it's shown me how truly long it takes to use up most products. Most products that I have panned take forever. There have been some products that have been faster to pan than others, but for the most part, if I'm buying a product, I'm committing to that product for a long time. So when I'm buying a new product or bringing a new product into my collection, now I'm always careful to ask myself, is this something that I'm going to want to commit to for a long time? Like, is this something that I'm actually going to want to either use up or just that I'm going to want to use long term? Or is this something that I'm going to bring into my collection just because it looks fun and unique and different? And then I'm going to force myself to use it twice and then realize I don't actually like it that much and then not want to use it up. Um, I'm just a lot more mindful now of what I bring in and I always have this thought in the back of my mind, like, hey, you know, this is going to take a while to use up. Do you really want to commit to this product? Or do you already have something similar to, like, do you really need to have another peachy pink blush in your collection? Like, don't you already have kind of a lot of those that you still haven't gotten around to panning? So it's just overall helped me to make purchases that I feel good about and that are going to add some kind of value to my life and to my collections. So those are the five big lessons that I've learned from project panning over the past five years. I, I feel like there's probably a lot more that I could say, but these are just like the five big takeaways that I've come away with. If you're thinking about starting a project pan, again, I have that video where I just explained the whole thing, like how to start one, what it is, all of that. I'll link that below. I also have a couple of playlists on project pan tips and ways to repurpose your project pan products. I'll also leave my project pan, like just my project pan update playlists linked down below if you want to watch those as well. But if you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel if you've not already. I'd also love to hear in the comments what are some things that you've learned from project panning. If you are a project panner and otherwise I hope you all have an amazing rest of your day and I will talk to you very soon in my next video. Bye!